Hey guys, welcome to today's video. In today's video, we are continuing our makeup series and we are on episode four. And episode four is going to be all about eyes. I even have all my little notes here because eyes are a little bit more intricate and not as easy for me to explain as all of the face stuff. So I do have my notes, just so you guys know, if you see me looking down, I am reading off of them to remember everything that I want to tell you guys. So first things first, you always want to put down an eye primer slash base, and you can use anything that you want to as your primer. They have actual eyeshadow primers. You can get something like this. This is a base, and this is from NYX, and this is in white. And it just looks like that. It's creamy. And these help the colors pop. I have not mastered working with this yet, but I do keep trying. And here is a example of an eye primer. This is from Ulta Beauty. And this is a tinted eye primer. I think I have used this once and it was okay. You just squeeze it out and then you put that on your eyes of course one eyeshadow primer that I have found that I love that I am currently out of because that's how much I loved it and I have not repurchased it yet is the wet n wild photo focus eyeshadow primer that primer is awesome that is the first primer I ever used and I loved it so in today's video I am going to be using the MAC paint pot in painterly I've never used this before and I've been very, very curious about it. So you guys basically get to learn with me how I'm going to use this on my eyes. The thing with primers is it's going to help keep your makeup from creasing and it is also going to extend your wear time. I forgot to mention that. I usually have been doing my eye makeup first and then my face. And that is because I've just been wanting to try it, honestly. And sometimes with majority of eyeshadows you are going to have some type of fallout now if you prefer to do your face makeup first and then move on to your eyeshadow like I have always done until now there are a few things you can do you can buy some shield armors or shadow armors these are from shop miss a they are a dollar and you get 14 in here so that's a decent price or you can do your makeup and then take some tape and I would recommend maybe sticking it to the back of your hand or something first and then pulling it up and then you can just stick it like this to get the eyeshadow up or you can actually lay down some translucent powder just pat it all under your eye with a brush and just leave it set there do your eyeshadow and then when you're done, you can just brush it away with your brush. Okay, so these are the main blending brushes that I use right here. My favorite one, did I even pick up my favorite one? No, this is my favorite one. This is dual ended and this is just honestly my favorite brush of all time. This is the Aisling Organics Brush 389. And on one end, you've got the blending side, and on the other end, you have what I use as a packing brush to pack on my shimmers and whatnot. I don't know, I just really love this brush. So this is a blending brush. This right here is a blending brush too. Let's see, it's just a little smaller. And these, this is the e.l.f. one, and the e.l.f brushes for a dollar are awesome. This was my first brush set was these elf ones with the white handles and I love them. Like I got these first and then I tried others and I would always end up grabbing for one of these again because I did not like the way the other ones blend in my shadow. So these two are the same. I'm going to put that one up. So you can see that this one is a little bigger and this one is a little smaller. So this one is considered an e.l.f. crease brush because it's tiny so it can fit right in your crease. And this is just a regular blending brush. And they are amazing, I'm not kidding guys. Dollar brushes, pff, amazing. 
So then here's another type of an e.l.f. blending brush. These, this set is $3 for each brush. And this one is a little different. It's not round like these ones. It's a little more flat on the sides and then fluffy in on the top. And this is a really great blending brush too. I love this little guy. And I am shedding hair everywhere today. Okay, so here are some bigger, fatter, fluffier blending brushes. And these I like to use like as I'm putting my colors on to just kind of help blend those colors better just because they are so fat and fluffy. And then I also will take them to fluff out the edges or soften the edges. But these are great. This one, these two are from my Shop Miss Ace set that I got for $10. You get 10 brushes and a little case with a lid. The lid I'm using for these brushes right here but ten dollars and fifty five cents so that's basically a dollar brush and you then you get this free case and they are great and here no those are still these are more shop miss a ones here's another little crease brush that i was talking about and if you look some of these brushes for blending are a little flatter on top or domed i guess you would say and then these ones come up to a little point and I think the ones with the point are just for more precision, more accuracy. And these ones are more just to keep, you know, blend, blend, blend everything. I'm going to say that word a lot in this video, just warning you guys now. So now here are two brushes that I use for concealer on my eyes. And I showed you guys these brushes in my concealer video. One is bigger and one is super tiny. So this one I will usually use just to lay down my base or my concealer, whatever I'm using to prime that day. And then this little one right here, this is from e.l.f., again, one of their dollar ones. This one I normally use to do my cut creases because I get more, what's the word? I don't know, it's easier so that I don't mess up. <laughs> like how this one is a little bigger, I feel like I mess up more when I try it with this one, so I just use my small one for that. And then let's talk about some packing brushes because I love packing brushes some of these technically are not for packing but I use them for that anyway so here are some brushes that I like for packing and packing eyeshadow some people will actually pack on all of their shadow okay and then they will take their blending brush and then they will blend it out because that actually works best for some people and then for like shimmers I use these too and I usually get them wet or I'll take them with my finger because tip real quick, shimmers will apply better with either a wet brush or your finger. I don't know why, but that's just how they work. And sometimes you'll even find that they don't work well with a wet brush and you have to use your finger and they work better. They're weird. So yeah, these are my favorite. I love these brushes and I will also use these sometimes as my lower lash line eyeshadow brush because I feel like they just fit in there perfectly and then here's an example of an angled liner brush and I will use these especially to apply my liquid eyeliners like when I use the Jeffree Star liquid lipsticks I will use a brush like this to get into my waterline so now we are going to move on to talking about the different types of shadows so the different types of shadows, there are cream, which I do not believe I own any of those. And those are good used as either a base or if you're just wanting to go with one single solid color to just put on your whole eye. But I have actually seen people use cream shadows and they are amazing with them, like using more than one. It's crazy, but amazing. And then we also have the loose, loose pigments. And I do not have any of those either. I have not graduated to loose pigments yet. I'm very, very nervous to use those because they can be harder to use and they can be a lot messier. So you just have to be very careful. But a very, very awesome pro about loose pigments is they are usually very, very, very pigmented and bright and awesome. So try them out, guys. I'm gonna try them out soon too. And then of course we have the regular pressed eyeshadows and pressed eyeshadows are great. I actually am not sure 
let's see. My ColourPop Sweet Talk palette has some pressed pigments in here. And pressed pigments are great. I've heard that some of them can be hard to work with and they will also stain you depending on the color of them. Like in the Jeffree Star Blue Blood palette, this Ocean Ice shade, in case you guys don't know, I'm going to show you. The Ocean Ice shade, for some reason, this one right here, super beautiful. But for some reason, it stains like a purple pink color. It's so strange. But that one will stain you. I saw a video of a girl and it stained her for like days. But that's just something you, you know, that's just something that can happen when it comes to, when it comes to pressed pigments. And I don't know if I touched base on this yet. I feel like I did, but maybe not. If you want your colors to pop, like say you're working with bright colors, right? And you want them to pop. You want to use like a white base. And usually I think they want you to stick with a matte one just because it makes it easier, but some of them are tacky and some people work better with tacky. So a white base, or you can also get a matte white eyeliner pencil and put that on your eye and then put the color on top of that and that will make it pop, guys. Like, I struggled a long time trying to figure out how to make the colors appear how I wanted them to, super bright, and that's all you gotta do, a white base. So now I'm going to stop blabbing about all of that stuff and I'm going to apply my paint pot and I have not used this yet, so forgive me. And then we're going to move on to eyeshadow, putting it on finally. I decided to just use my little brush that I use to apply my concealer to my eye to put on my MAC paint pot. I think it's going on well. I definitely like the way it feels. And also guys, when you see people with that really sharp V line coming out, I will either use one of these or a piece of tape to get that shape. So for today's video, I decided to go in with my Manny MUA Life's a Drag palette because in this palette, we have a bunch of safe neutral shades and then we've just got little hints of color. So I am going to stick with the side over here today because it's more beginner friendly. And let's face it, I'm not a pro yet. So I've got my MAC Painterly Paint Pot on. I'm so nervous to use this, you guys. I get so nervous trying new products, especially on camera. <laughs> and I am actually going to go ahead and set it with Cake Face. And I'm going to use this fluffy, let's see, Farrah 35 F brush. And I'm just going to dip. You always want to tap to get that excess off. So just very gently pressing and windshield wiper motions to set that in place. And you don't have to use white, you can use something that's way closer to your skin tone if you want. I just prefer to use the white, it's usually what I go for anyway. And voila, I'm happy with that. And I am going to you do one eye at a time today because I'm just going to do one on camera and then I will do the other one off camera. I'm going to go ahead and put my tape on. And what I do with my tape is I usually try and put it as close to here as possible. And then I slant it to meet with my eyebrow because you don't usually wanna go past your eyebrow with your eyeshadow because then it can look kind of different. I mean, if you like that, that's fine. But I like to keep it lined up with my eyebrow. So, there we go, and that's it. And then you just stick it on. And then that will help keep everything nice and straight at the end. And now I'm going to go in with what is going to be referred to as my transition shade. Now with a transition shade, that is a color that is going to help blend all the other colors. So mine is going to be Hunty today because I am sticking with these browns 
all right here and that is the lightest one and usually you kind of want to use the lightest one as your transition shade and for that I am going to go in with this brush from shop miss a and we are just going to dip into it tap tap and then we put it in now when it comes to doing your eyeshadow you want to start out small you don't want to go in with a ton right off the bat and this is because you can build up but you cannot take away so if you go in too hard at first and you're not happy with it then you're going to have to start over because you cannot take it away and I don't know about you guys but I do not like when I have to start over so you're just going to go in windshield wiper motion nice and gently you don't want to do it too hard or another way you can do it is little circular motions like this and then that is the same technique you are going to use when you are blending everything together so there's my transition shade I'm trying to get as close to the camera for you guys today as I can so you can see everything that I am talking about. All right. So now we are going to move on to our next shade. So the next shade I'm going in with is Mug. And I am going to use that shade for my outer corner, my outer V. And then I'm going to bring it through my crease and just go and go and go and blend and blend and blend. And for that, I think I'm actually going to go in with one of my e.l.f. blending brushes today. I have not used this in a while. I've been on a kick with my Aisling. So yeah, we're going to use e.l.f. today. So tap, 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 or dip, 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 tap, 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 and go. And of course, you can dip in more. If you want it darker. Now when it comes to hooded eyes and stuff like that, I'm not good with stuff like that, guys. Someone who you could check out that helps a lot with hooded eyes is, I believe, Annette's Makeup Corner. I will try and link her up top here for you guys because she's awesome and she I'm pretty sure she's the one that I watch that really gives decent tips for hooded eyes and she's just amazing so check her out anyway so now I'm just ever so gently trying to smoke out the edges of this dark brown you just want to go back and forth very very lightly and smoke it out i think you can see the difference where it's darker and then it just goes lighter and lighter as we go up So now what I want to do next is I want to go in with the shade Trade. And this shade is a little darker than Mug. And I'm going to go in with my little e.l.f. crease brush. Is that it? I thought it was smaller. No, this is it. Okay, so I'm going to go in with the smaller one. And just dip. And what I'm going to do here is I want to focus more on placing it right there on the outer V and build it up a little bit and to use that to what they call deepen the crease 
Remember guys, you do not have to push hard. Just very gently. Be nice to your eyes. They love you and they need care. <laughs> I know because my eyes have gone through a lot. So right here, I hope you guys can see, I will get close in a second where we are just deepening it up and placing it on our outer V. I hope you guys can see. And you guys have to remember, I'm not a pro either, so I'm just teaching you guys what I know and what I do on myself. Okay, so then I will take a fluffy brush like this right here and I will just go back and forth, back and forth. Now one step that I did forget, and please forgive me, is I wanted to take sickening right here and I wanted to place this like I wanted to put this on before mug and I wanted it to be up here like kind of where we smoked mug out is where I wanted sickening to be placed so I'm just going in with sickening now to get that color that I wanted there so please forgive me guys I forgot that part but really you can do it this way too you can just go back in with it, place it over the shade that you put down, and then you can take a clean, clean brush or use your color switch, go back in with mug, and blend the two together. And that will work just fine. I hope what I'm showing you guys and saying to you guys is making sense. That's why I get so nervous doing stuff like this because I'm just so afraid that I'm not explaining things properly, but that's also why I do it so that maybe that'll help. So today I am not going to do a cut crease because let's face it, that's hard and I'm still learning that so I'm not going to throw that in this beginner's video. So instead I'm just going to pick a shimmer and I am going to show you guys how I apply my shimmers. So for my inner corner, I usually like to stick with a brighter shimmer so I'm going to go in with Beat today. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my flat brush and I'm going to just run it along the shade, just like that, and just coat it on both sides. And then I'm going to take a setting spray, and I'm going to spray the brush. And then I'm just going to put it on my lid. And that is how I do my shimmers. I just think it's easier with a wet brush to put them on. With a dry brush, for me, I cannot get them to go on and pop, and we want them to pop. So when I have my shimmer on, I am going to go in again with my little e.l.f. crease brush and dip in to trade again. And I am going to take that and just stamp it on my outer V again and just try and blend it with beet. And this is kind of like a, I don't know, I consider it kind of a easy cheat cut crease, <laughs> really. I mean, it's not really, but that's just how I look at it. And that's it. 
that is it. So now I'm going to take my tape off. And there we are. There's that line I've been talking about this whole time. Look how pretty that is. I love that. And now let's go ahead and work on our lower lash line. Normally for me, when it comes to my lower lash line, I like to stick with the shade that I have on my outer V. That's just how I like it. You don't have to do that. Now with this palette, I did do a rainbow lash line before, but we are not going to do that today. We're just going to keep it simple. So with that, you just kind of start dragging it along your lower lash line, just like this. And then what I'll do is I will kind of try to connect it to my little V right here. And then just back and forth. You can even press it on if you want and then smoke it out. And there's that. So right now I'm debating whether or not I want to go in with another shade, but you know what? No, I'm just going to keep smoking this out and bring it all the way to the beginning of my tear duct. So I'm just finishing up a little more blending. All right, and that is it for this eye. So let's move in to adding some eyeliner to our waterline. Now, for eyeliner in your waterline, I try to be really careful, and I'll take one of my beauty blenders and just pull down a little bit and then start adding it. <coughs> See? And it just makes it a little bit easier to apply it right where you want it. And I think it's a little less strenuous on your eye because it's not usually good to pull on your eye. Like this might not even be great for it because it does cause wrinkles faster, I believe. But I don't know. I feel better doing this than just stretching it out with my hand. So there is my eyeliner in my waterline. And then we are going to talk about highlighting our brow bone and our tear duct. This may be wrong of me, but I'm going to use some, um, a shade from the Blue Blood palette. Sorry guys, don't judge me. But I'm going to use Colonin, of course, because that is my favorite one to highlight my brow bone and my inner corner with. So for my brow bone I will usually just take a little brush like this flat one and I just dip in and with colonin you don't need a lot and then I will just run it along my brow bone and I hope you guys can see on camera that it is in fact highlighting and it just looks really pretty. It just adds a little something more to your eye look. And there's that. And then for my inner corner, I will take a little brush like this one. Or not my inner corner, my tear duct. And then again, I will just dip ever so lightly because you can build up your highlight too in your tear duct. And then just stamp. And I build mine up a lot because I like it very, very noticeable. You can even wet your brush for this part too. But with this shade, I don't necessarily feel like I need to wet it just because it is so pigmented. And there it is. And I will run it a little into my lower lash line shade. 
And there is that. And then I do my mascara. So I'm going to do my other eye off camera and then we will come back to finish up. And that is going to be it for this video, guys. This is part four, finished. And I hope it helped you guys a little bit. I know I can kind of be all over the place sometimes, but I hope that it was, you guys got the gist of it. And real quick, the lip gloss I am wearing today is the Shop Miss A AOA Studio Lip Pop in Wild Child. It looks brighter than what it is. It goes on very, very nice. And real quick too, <laughs> I want your guys' opinion because the last time I painted my nails did not go over well. So I have these two colors here. Which one would you like to see on me next? We have Never Ending or Gravity. They are both very, very pretty. So let me know. And of course, it's bonus entry time. So go and comment this emoji on my giveaway video. And I am also going to try to put up a 300 subscriber giveaway video tomorrow or possibly later tonight. So I love you guys. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments section. I will respond to you guys. I love you guys and thank you so much for watching this series. I was so nervous about it. And tomorrow is going to be our last episode in this series. So I will see you guys tomorrow and I love you so much. Bye guys.